I got a plane from my Uncle Roger. It's a Wards Master number five, so it's a jack plane. And the thing I really like about this is it's really big and heavy, so it carries a lot of weight when cutting wood. Um, it, it's good at getting through the knots and, and kind of gnarly spots in the wood. When I'm first taking it apart, uh, I notice that it's in really good condition. Uh, the handles are in great condition, and that's kind of the biggest concern when uh, initially looking over the planes, is because when there's cracks or dents or, or any problems with the handles, those are going to be the hardest to replace. It was nice to see that the steel and the brass were in really good condition as well. Uh, the brass is naturally softer than the steel, but those were in really good condition. They didn't really have any dings or dents, and, and that was nice to see. The steel had a little bit of corrosion on it, some rust and some pitting in some spots, but that's easy enough to remove. After I had the plane disassembled, I took the uh, some of the metal parts to the wire wheel, and those actually cleaned up really well. I've got a pretty aggressive wheel on there, but it seemed to work really well. When I took the lever cap to the wire wheel, it seemed to expose kind of a almost a film or a coating on top of the lever cap. Um, but with enough work, it, I was able to get that out. So here I'm, I'm at the vise and I'm punching out the pin that holds the lever in place. Uh, by, by removing that, I'm able to, to get in and around the lever and the lever cap much better on the wire wheel. So it was, it was kind of a pain to get that out, but it, it did work eventually. Getting inside the back of the lever cap was a little bit of a trick. Um, it, I couldn't get in there with the wire wheel, but I had a brush attachment that fit in the drill, and that actually seemed to work really well. I then started working on some of the screws and bolts, um, and these ones have the brass heads on them, and those look really nice when they're cleaned up. The cutter nut was another one of those tricky pieces to work with on the wire wheel, but using the vice grips I was able to hold it pretty stable. Um, just like with the lever cap, I wasn't able to get into every little nook and cranny of the piece. So I brought it over to the vise and I used that brush attachment for the drill again. And it, it didn't do a whole lot, um, but it seemed to help a little bit. Since the brush attachment for the drill wasn't working too well, I, I figured I'd try some of the Sheila Shine. And yes, you should wear gloves. I, I didn't, but definitely good to wear gloves with something like this. The blade had some of the hardest corrosion to remove, but the wire wheel did a good job removing that. Um, it's kind of cool because you can see the different types of steel after it's all cleaned up. The, the edge has a much harder steel than the back of the blade does. So I started working on the base and I kind of noticed that any of the discoloration of, on the base was actually just surface rust and that was actually really easy to get off with the wire wheel so it looked pretty good after just hitting it with the wire wheel. One of the most essential aspects of any plane though is having a really flat base and so the flattest thing that I have is the joiner table. Um, I mean you can, use a, you can use a cast iron table saw or even a piece of glass that's really flat but I laid a piece of sandpaper down and used that to kind of knock down the high spots on the base. I thought it'd be a good idea to do the sides of the base too, uh, in addition to the sole. Just like with the pin on the lever cap, I wanted to remove the pin on the frog that holds this little blade adjustment uh, lever so that I could get in there and clean it up the best I could. This one was tricky to remove too, but with a little bit of work, I was able to get it out. I don't think that they're made to be able to be removable, but I did my best to get it out and it worked. So now with everything removed from the frog that I could remove, um, I, I did take it to the wire wheel and cleaned up all the, all the exposed paint that I could. And so I'm taping off all the spots that I want to remain unpainted. I noticed that a lot of times it's nice to have a good sharp knife to be able to more precisely lay the tape down and then get a better finish. I wanted to go with the original color scheme so I painted it a nice gloss red. 
it's definitely important to go with a good quality spray paint. The, the low ball spray paints just aren't going to be as durable and they're not going to leave as nice a finish as a good one. I use Rust-Oleum and, and that's the one I typically use. After I finished working on all of the metal pieces of the plane, I started working on the wooden parts, so the knob and the handle. I found that for working on the knob, I could lock a bolt into the chuck of my drill and then use that to, to screw into the knob itself. I started with 60 grit sandpaper to remove the lacquer on the knob and then I moved on to 220 and then 400 grit sandpaper. I coated the knob and the handle with boiled linseed oil instead of lacquer or polyurethane because it's a lot more comfortable on the hands. I taped off the sides of the base earlier for painting, so I went back now and sprayed it with the black gloss paint. While that was drying, I went back to the joiner and started flattening the back of the blade. The blade was already really flat, but it was important for me to remove some of the shallow pitting near the edge. It's a little bit hard to see, but after a few minutes with the 220 grit sandpaper, I started to get a really nice uh, surface on the back of the edge. I started working on the front of the edge now, and I like to pull towards me just so that the burr will form on the very edge and not interfere with the sharpening. It's a little bit tough to see, but the edge is being flattened out and the corrosion is being removed. I kept working with the 220 grit sandpaper until all the corrosion was removed from the front and the back of the edge. After I finished using the 220 grit sandpaper, I moved on to 400, 600, 800, and then 1500 grit sandpaper. Before I finished with each of those grits though, I turned the blade over on the sandpaper, and with a slight tug, I was able to pull the burr right off the edge. When I had finished with the 1500 grit sandpaper, I was left with a pretty razor sharp edge. Now, usually the cap iron isn't the first thing you would think you'd want to sharpen, but when the wood shavings first pass over the blade, the cap iron is the first thing that they're going to come in contact with, so it's important to have a slick surface for that. This will help the shavings slide easier, and it should reduce some clogging of the shavings. Make sure to do both the front and the back of the cap iron, especially where it's going to come in contact with the edge. I finally reached the point where all the pieces were cleaned up and ready to be reassembled. I started with the blade and the cap iron, and when I reattach these together, it's important to get the cap iron up really close to the edge of the blade, not too close but it's important to give the edge some more support and it helps get the shavings out of the way. <laughs> Clearly I was having some trouble watching what I was doing in the viewfinder. I then reattached the lever to the lever cap and with the spring that it has on there, it's a little bit tricky to put it in place, but. I was able to get it started and then tap it the rest of the way in with the hammer. The base was dry now and so I was ready to take the tape off. That's always one of my favorite parts of the project is kind of seeing the difference between that newly restored metal and the nice new paint. I did the same thing with the frog now and I thought the steel looked really nice contrasting with the new red. I realized that I wasn't able to screw the adjustment tab in with the cutter nut uh, screwed in place, so I had to take the cutter nut off and then, and then finish screwing the adjuster tab back in. I made sure I had that sitting straight before I tightened it down. Then I put the cutter nut back on. Um, but it's interesting because the cutter nut has a slot in it specially designed to let the lever, the blade adjustment lever, run in it. So I had to make sure that I got that lever into the slot on the cutter nut before I tightened that down.
It was time now to reattach the frog to the base and it's important to remember the two washers that go with the two screws that attach that back down on the base. Also it's important to make sure that the adjuster tab sits cleanly with the adjuster screw. The adjuster screw and the adjuster tab are now down under the cutter nut so it's out of sight in this picture. I went ahead and put the knob and the handle back on now and those brass headed screws look so nice next to the handles. I believe they're rosewood, but I'm not positive. Either way, the brass looks really nice next to them. Next, I set the blade and the cap iron assembly back down into the plane. It's important to be careful with the blade now because it's so sharp. I worked really hard to make the blade as sharp as it is, and it's not worth it at this point to risk dulling it by setting it back into place carelessly. Now all that's left to do is to put the lever cap back in place and adjust the lever cap screw just so that there's the right tension with the lever. All in all, the project turned out really nicely. It was nice to be able to restore the wood handles, the metal, and give it a new coat of paint. And with the really sharp blade and quality construction, it does its job really well. It was a fun project and it's my favorite way to grow my tool collection.